So I want to talk, uh, you know, I mentioned this idea of the genomic revolution, uh, which we're, you know, we've been talking about for a while, but we're now in actually a revolution of revolutions. There's so much happening. It's not just that we've got faster and cheaper, radically faster and cheaper gene se uh, sequencing technology and the next generation of that. But in addition, we have uh, a whole new set of gene editing tools that are radically changing uh, science, uh, the ability to actually intervene in our own you know, DNA. Uh, we have, in addition to that, the revolution in AI and deep learning, which we've been hearing about, which is giving us brand new molecular and genetic targets uh, of extraordinary complexity that we never even dreamed of pursuing before. We have a revolution in immuno-oncology, which is helping us understand how to harness the immune system to fight things like cancer. And we've already talked about the revolutions in 5G and mobility and sensors and everything else in robotics. So my question for you, Simone, to start with is, is this time different? Are we really in a place where this confluence of revolutions is different than it ever has been before? And if so, how on earth do you start to invest in that? I think the re revolution is definitely here. It's a revolution of, it's a combination of revolution of biology and um, deep machine learning, AI. So for example, uh, if you want to uh, go for, if we want to go for cancer early detection, it's almost a dream. But it's a combination of understanding the genomic features and, a combina and, and also the ability to deep sequencing by using AI tools. Yeah, so you know, just to follow up though, you know, when there's so many new technologies, how do you make the bets that, you know, that harness all of them together or do you focus on very specific kinds of tech? Because your, your, your investments are really unique as I've been looking at them. To, I think it only if, in my experience, I think that formula only applies to venture capital investment or venture investors <laughs> who intend to invest in company at very early stage. Mm -hmm. So to be successful, actually, the principle is not to invest, not to diversify, actually is to concentrate. Mm -hmm. To concentrate in areas where you can understand the technology or you have the ability to assemble resources that can help you capture the most advanced technology. Yeah. So the key is not to, not to de decentralize, it's to focus. That's, inter that's interesting. Li Ching, um, I, I want to mention this other revolution, which I didn't mention, include that, which is the consumer revolution. And you know, so much of the growth in your business, making these extraordinary gene sequencing uh, devices, um, there has been a, a movement towards things like 23andMe and Ancestry.com and Color and Garden and, and uh, several others. You know, but, but recently over the summer, uh, there was some softness in that market and that affected your stock. And you know, it still sort of hasn't quite recovered. The question is, is that a temporary setback? Or are we gonna still see the consumer market dominate um, in the next uh, year? Okay, so I, I see uh, most uh, audience are Chinese. Can I, yeah, can I just uh, speak in Chinese? Yes, please. I want to speak in Chinese. For the Illumina technology in U.S., they have a mass uh, a gene company like 23andMe, as you mentioned, and uh, a host of companies are using gene technologies. Uh, during their startups, they use uh, genomics, genomics uh, analysis because uh, uh, U.S. Uh, is composed of different races, so race uh, analysis uh, is a key topic. Um, but after all the population being analyzed uh, by the uh, races, uh, for the mass uh, genomic companies, uh, they are declining in their business. So all these companies are trying very hard to explore the new areas. For example, genes um, impacts to the human health, to their lifestyles, and uh, also to the nutrition aspects. 
some gene companies uh, were even dedicated uh, to the uh, education of the infants uh, and also babies and children. So they were doing explorations as soon as they identify the new areas, definitely there are going to be promising futures in those areas. In China, situations are slightly different. A large majority of gene companies are still in its infancy period, like 23 Magic Box and other companies. They have a very good application situations. So a lot of continued investment is still enjoy rapid development. Into this in a big way. I mean, you've got the UK, for example, which is sequencing 450,000 people. You've got the, in the US, you've got the All of Us, uh, you know, program at the NIH, which is 2 million. And then you just signed a deal with, in China, right, to do something similar. Indeed. Last year, we successfully uh, uh, won a bid. It was a tendering process. Uh, it's in the Harbin uh, Hospital uh, University, and uh, it was a joint project uh, by the Minister of Health and the most, the Minister of Science and Technology. They selected uh, the uh, our company to conduct uh, the population cohort uh, study. This is very conducive and beneficial to accumulate uh, the big gene data for China. And uh, with this uh, databases, uh, it's very uh, conducive uh, to study the uh, treatment uh, technologies. I'm very happy that uh, the Harbin uh, University uh, and also most and the Ministry of uh, Health selected our technology. We are going to learn the statistics uh, from you. UK and the US, as well as those cutting edge technologies in the information technology field in our cohort study. You know, one of the things that Ching mentioned uh, is that drug companies uh, are using this genetic profiling to understand how drugs work. Um, there's a, another revolution happening right here in China. There are 15,000 drugs in the drug development pipeline here, um, and obviously GPC is the China's largest producer and a distributor of drugs, including traditional Chinese medicines. Um, are you, what are you doing to make sure that there are new technologies that are finding new biological targets for those kinds of drugs? And could you talk a little bit about the effort to create international standards uh, for some of these Chinese uh, traditional medicines? Just now, Mr. Lee mentioned a lot about the biological technologies uh, breakthroughs in the prevention diagnosis, even the treatment of the diseases issue, even the culture, uh, tissue culture applications. We know a lot of about logical technologies uh, since 1970s. After four decades of involvement, uh, remarkable progresses uh, and milestones being made. Uh, a lot of new products uh, provided uh, to the humankind uh, to improve the well-being of the humans. Uh, in China, we are in the uh, full commercialization and industrialization of gene technology. But uh, it's a, a gradual process. Our group, uh, as the uh, largest leading pharmaceutical company in China, we rank number one for consecutive eight years. In recent years, we focus on the biological drugs, uh, R&D work, especially the whole value chain. In particular, the supporting services in the whole value chain, um, including the diagnosis by using biological technologies and also the biological treatment, we had a lot of strengths and advantages. But in rolling out those technologies, we have one gene drug uh, um, to cure uh, the 10% uh, incidence uh, uh, hepatitis uh, diseases in China, hepatitis B. 
um, but uh, the review and approval process in China uh, because there's a, 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 an inadequate guideline in China available, so our work uh, progressed uh, very slowly. But in this uh, process, uh, the cutting edge technology, like uh, from uh, Illumina and other companies, this would uh, definitely uh, promote uh, the rules and regulation drafting by the CDE in China Review Center of the drugs, and uh, so we look forward to that. Just get into this idea of AI and using artificial intelligence, you know, in all of these intersections that we're talking about, and, you know, particularly in the case of cancer, and you, last year on this stage, you said that, a, that the cancer cell is the perfect AI cell. I, and I love that. You said, you know, it grows faster, it evolves faster, it thinks faster, it, it evades, evades faster. detection faster. And, and, you know, essentially it is a, you know, a super, art of, a super intelligent cell. Um, and yet, you're, and you're also using the same kind of technologies to outwit that AI cell. So I think to combat cancer, right, the most relevant factor actually is to be able to detect cancer earlier. Mm -hmm. Once tumor forms, it, for one CM tumor, it has about one billion cells, and it has all the AR cell features. So it is much difficult to, to defeat cancer once it's there. So the best that the, rev the revolutionary breakthrough in cancer treatment actually is to detect cancer faster, earlier. Mm -hmm. And given that uh, Illumina has done its job by giving us all sorts of uh, uh, sequencing, sequencing tools, different size, different uh, throughputs, et cetera. So that part of the, the, the leg of the revolution is already there in terms of early cancer detection. The, 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 the rest is up to the, the industry to come up with the sample preparation uh, tools in order for this whole game to happen. So Clint, Clayton earlier talked about um, a number of companies. When we talk about sequencing, cancer-related sequencing, a lot of names come to pop up. For example, 23andMe, Grail, uh, Foundation Medicine, Garden Health. So i like to take this opportunity to clarify a bit. 23andMe is for fun, a lot of fun, <laughs> because it gives you the, A gives you the genetic feature as to who you are, what your family tree is, and it tells you <clears> genetically <throat> what kind of health risk you might be exposed to. But it is not intent for any diagnosis. Mm. It is not to be able to detect cancer, definitely not. For $99, it won't even give you a deep, uh, uh, give you a whole genome sequencing uh, picture, unless uh, Illumina achieves another revolution, driving down the cost, uh, <laughs> you know, by 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 tenfold, for example. Well, Ching is already. In fact, we were talking earlier, and if you go from the cost of sequencing an entire genome 20 years it's ago, from 10 three, million to yeah. so a couple of thousand, to a thousand dollars, where you're pretty close to that now. In terms of liquid biopsies, so this is what what you were referring to: the ability to detect telltale fragments of DNA, tiny little fragments of DNA, and use that to as biomarkers of of a disease and progression. Um, you spun off a company, uh, Illumina, uh, called Grail, to do just that, and there have been a number of these liquid biopsy companies. How, how good are they in terms of identifying uh, disease progression? It's a dream. Yeah, I mean, because Simone says, you know, we've got to get earlier in the, intervene earlier in that disease I, I think that yeah. uh, Grail is a, you know, I'm very, we're very glad that uh, Illumina help produced a company called Grill. Yeah. Uh, Grill, 23 me is for fun. Grill is a dream, it's a beautiful dream. It intends to detect cancer at very early stage to substantially increase survival rate. Mm -hmm. What it does is it get a tube of blood from you and then try to capture the DNA and RNA released from tumor cell into the blood. So it is, relevant from science point of view. But the difficulty is that the difficulty or the challenge is that it won't be able to tell you or reflect the genomic feature from the tumors 
from which they are originated. Mm -hmm. So I might be able to tell you, you may have cancer, but I don't know what kind of cancer it is and how it comes, right. it, how it managed to come to you. But I thought, but without grill, we don't even dare to dream. So grill is a beautiful dream, but I think there is hope. The hope is another company called Shrive. Yeah. Uh, Shrive is backed by very, so the mission of, of, of Shrive is the same as Grill. But uh, the difference is, I think, is that, uh, allow me to say that, um, with, with no, I'm not being disrespectful to Grill. I think Grill established a torch, which is really important. But Shrive is backed by very solid science. The, uh, the John Hopkins team, through decades of research, in 2018 has put out a beautiful paper in science. It says it is able to localize the mutated uh, uh, cancer. Basically, it nails down from hundreds, hundreds, thousands, thousands of unknown numbers of mutations. It is able to narrow down 61 cancer-related hotspots mutations. Yeah. With that 61, someone might have. So I want, I want to come back to, and change just a second, but I want to see if anyone has a question out there. And if you do, we've got some mic wranglers and we'll have a paddle up there. Anybody have a question? Okay. Uh, well, if you do, in just a second, I'll, I'll come right back to you. Uh, Ching, we talked about this uh, idea of using AI, though, to, to be able to make a little bit more sense, to, to ask those impossible questions, if you will, about what gene interactions are most likely to cause disease later on, whether it's a, a missense mutation or a deletion or a, of a specific uh, nucleotide or whatever it is. We know that in some cases, some, some mutations are more important than others. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about what Illumina, how Illumina is, is filling that gap? Yeah. Um, so, uh, so it is like this, Illumina, the way we fill the gap is different. We ourselves, a lot of R&D of different diseases and diagnostics uh, methods, However, we pay more attention, we rely more on opening our technological platform to engage many companies on our platform to study, to research diagnostic of diseases, the mutation uh, models and mechanisms. For example, in China right now, in tumor, we, uh, burning rock, in the, we work with them so microbiology in Guangzhou, we also partner with Yi Qing Yu on many projects. Illumina, we open our platform, not we ourselves using AI tool to explore the diagnostic of disease, rather we open up our system, all the IVD uh, diagnosis interested companies can work on our platform to do their R&D. So the development results indeed is changing every day. Basically, globally in China, every day we can have a paper coming out to see the diagnostic of many uh, diseases, is much making progress. So in this aspect, we are a very unique company, relying on an ecosystem to get the solutions for human diseases diagnostics. Illumina machines and tools are used in 90% of the world's uh, sequencing. So it's kind of an amazing figure uh, how you have you managed to capture that entire market there. Um, let's see if we have a question from the audience. Anybody? Got some? Yeah, well, we got one right there. Martin Reeves? I identified you, but you might as well identify yourself again. Yeah. Uh, Martin Reeves from the BCG Henderson Institute. I wanted to ask, um, these technologies um, have uh, Profound, uh, profound functionality, but of course one of the problems with pharmaceutical research is stagnant productivity, um, valuable drugs per dollar or unit of effort. Um, have we reached the point yet where these technologies are impacting on that stagnating R&D productivity? Anybody? Yeah. Simone, you want to take that or, or Madam Lou? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, if I may. Yes, I think uh, sequencing there has a clinical application, either to test cancer patients or, or go for early detection. But sequencing is also very, very relevant in basic research. 
For example, a company called the Foundation Medicine, it has a, a box of 500 genes. It really is very relevant in enabling research to once you identify a new mechanism, but how to make it clinical relevant yeah. to what to link to what gene mutation to what disease? I think uh, 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 gene, genome technology has come to a point where it is it is very enabling to basic research or clinical research. Yeah, we have one more question. We've got time for one more question. Anybody? Lights on. Yeah. Anybody? I thought I saw another hand. Somebody shy out there doesn't want to. Ask a question. All right. So, um, Madam Liu, um, I want, I've got a question for you on, again, getting into the idea with so much, you know, histories of science in, in the Chinese drug development world, and yet there isn't that much, there aren't that many Chinese-made drugs that are actually being sold overseas in markets overseas. How are you beginning to change that? I and mean, we saw one approval, an FDA approval for a new Alzheimer's drug just this, the other day. But this is, this is, it needs to be a paradigm shift for China to enter the world of innovative pharma. Thank you very much uh, for your question. So as Mars, uh, this disease is an important disease which has become more and more uh, 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 in the society. Everybody is challenged by this Alzheimer's. So traditional Chinese medicine has 5,000 years of history. It's very played a very important role for the involvement and progress of Chinese society. It's a traditional medicine. So it has its uniqueness in treating these diseases. So my company has been dedicated to R&D of this kind of uh, 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 traditional medicines. So right now, one of the drugs we did, we have completed all the clinical work for early stage and mid stage as Alzheimer's. It has very, the advocacy is very good. But internationally, we do not have a appraisal evaluation standard or criteria, so to speak. So this product has been placed uh, in the uh, drug appraisal center of China. Actually, our product, this product, is even better, more efficient than the just approved by the government medicine in treating Alzheimer's. It's better. However, we still want to make more effort to promote the marketization, the market launch of this product so we can have a very good efficacy so this traditional medicine can serve a bigger segment of the population. It is our belief traditional Chinese medicine in curing, preventing uh, human disease will play an even bigger role. Thank you much. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you, Madam Yu, Li Ching, and Simone Song. Thank Appreciate you. that. It was a great conversation.